Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope everyone's doing well. So if you notice, I'm still wearing the same Iron Man t-shirt. It's because it's still yesterday for me. It might be tomorrow for you guys or today for you guys, but it's still yesterday for me. So yeah. Anyways, this is going to be a little bit about this cord buddy thing that I picked up, which is a nice little tool. And I'm going to kind of go over a little bit some of the pros and cons. So it mounts to your guitar neck, pretty simple. And out of the box, I didn't even look at the paperwork or, or the books or the manuals or even the uh, music books to kind of see um, what this thing is about. Uh, so basically, once you get it, open this up as far as you can get the thing open to and then place it on top of your neck. There's two little ledges, one on each side of the pads where you rest the uh cord buddy on top of your fretboard now it won't damage it's not going to damage your, your guitar in any way as far as i know of because it hasn't done it to mine so what they say to do when you put this on and the reason why i say what they say to do is because i watched a video about it um it's part of the reason why i end up buying one of these so you want to get this thing kind of sitting really nice and snug evenly on your neck and then this one right here the blue one you want to have it kind of push down right before your third fret in order for it to get a good grip on uh, fretting instead of buzzing or anything else. And then you lock it down just like so. Just turn the screw here and lock it down. Now there is no adjustment as far as tilting this thing goes. You can't tilt it up and down. All right, unless you loosen it up and kind of tilt it with the, the neck, but there's only so much padding on rubber on these things where it grips the side of each neck and beyond. If you tighten it, they say tighten it as much as possible by hand. If you end up hitting the plastic on there and starting to torque on it with your hand, you might dent either your fretboard, your neck, or, you know, whatever you hit this thing is touching. So basically, it's pretty self-explanatory as far as mounting it goes. Uh, it's works pretty good i mean i can't complain i made a little bit of a video on it the only kind of quirky things that i found out with it is you really got to mash down with your fingers on this in order to create the chords that you're looking for um if you don't you'll have uh some fret buzz or you'll have a muted string that uh you know you won't hear nothing out of it so you gotta really push some finger force behind this thing and part of the reason being is you know how high this thing sticks up from the fretboard. Another quirky thing about this thing is if you saw in my video, I had to push in these guys because they do kind of slide out. So they take these things, make this to where it comes apart and you can take all these out. If you start learning the chord, you know, you start memorizing the chord and how it sounds and everything else, you're able to remove each one of these things and start making the chord yourself instead of letting this thing. Because as you see, this hits three strings. But the problem with this is, is you see how easy it is to slide in and out. That happens to you while you're using it. Maybe stick a piece of paper inside there uh, in order to kind of get it to stay in one spot, maybe. Otherwise, um, without looking at the books, without learning anything as far as making a song goes or or sound or whatever, um, it's pretty simple to get into without even looking at the books for music. You can kind of create your own. Uh, again, the bad thing is about it is like if I take this one right here, it sounds pretty good. Yeah, without force on that, you're not going to get the sound you're looking for. But otherwise, um, you know, I don't know if you can move this to different positions of the neck. I'm sure you probably could. Uh, I don't see why not. As long as it's going to create the same chords, I guess. But otherwise, learning from this thing might be a plus, but might be a minus at the same time. Because this is making your chord. This is not showing you finger position. And... Uh, you're basically cheating by, you know, pushing a red button. Now, I know probably in the books and stuff like that, they probably have a diagram showing you 
uh, what that cord is and how finger position should be on the neck to make that cord. But with this thing, if you're going to use this thing all the time or something like that, you're not going to learn whatever that cord is without referring back to the book and say, okay, well, if I want to make this cord, then I have to place my fingers, you know, in a certain way in order for that cord to be reproduced. So it's kind of like a cheating. Actually, you are cheating, right? I mean, anything that makes any, something else easier is kind of cheating. Uh, to defeat the purpose of working for the outcome when you can just push a little red button and strum, right? I think it's pretty good. I think um, for myself, you know, with, with, you know, learning chords and stuff like that, I might be able to benefit off of this besides being able just to push a colored button and make sounds for with it. Um, if I use it enough times, I'm sure I can create uh, uh create and learn what those chords are as long as I'm looking at something as I'm creating pushing the blue button or whatever uh, as long as I could look at something to reference to and I could understand and, and know where that's coming from so just like Donald Trump they took away his red button but with this I got my own now